probably name 10 or 15 massively important Doctor Who episodes off the top of our head, right? I mean, my mind goes straight to Silence in the Library for obvious reasons and stuff like An Unearthly Child and Rose. But there are plenty of more unassuming episodes that are very important too. For instance, The Deadly Assassin is considered by many to be the first cultural work to use the word Matrix to refer to a virtual reality years before it was popularised by William Gibson's novel Neuromancer. It's possible to give many episodes of Doctor Who a new level of importance by framing them in the context of the time in which they were broadcast, or in the case of one story, how a repeat viewing changed the course of the show's future. I'm Ellie for Who Culture and here are 10 Doctor Who episodes more important than you realised. Number 10. The Next Doctor Building on the response to David Tennant's announcement that he was leaving Doctor Who, the next Doctor was a tremendous bit of misdirection from Russell T. Davis. David Morrissey was not David Tennant's replacement, but was instead Jackson Lake, a man who believed he was the Doctor after an accident with an info stamp. Which brings us to the importance of the next Doctor in the history of Doctor Who. Because while we'd seen sketches of previous incarnations in John Smith's journal of impossible things in human nature, we'd never seen seen any actual footage. And so it was that upon activating the info stamp, footage of the first eight classic Doctors plus Eccleston and Tennant appeared on TV on Christmas Day 2008. While we'd had it confirmed time and time again that New Who was a continuation, it was thrilling to have the lineage displayed for all to see. The next Doctor was the last episode of Doctor Who to be filmed in standard definition. From the planet of the dead onwards, it was shot in HD and now years later UHD. To fit alongside the other 2009 specials, The Next Doctor was the first Doctor Who episode to be upscaled to high definition, another feather in its cap of importance. Number 9. The Rescue Vicky is technically the third Doctor Who companion, but there's a case to be made that she's the one who defines the role in The Rescue. Susan was the Doctor's granddaughter, so she doesn't really count, while Ian and Barbara were kidnapped. They became a close family unit over the course of their travels, but there were a few teething problems. No such problems with Vicky, though, who is the first person to actually be invited to travel in the TARDIS by the Doctor. Missing his granddaughter, who departed in the previous serial, the Doctor meets and rescues the young orphan who will become his next companion. The rescue establishes Doctor Who's core ideas of the title character as a lonely god seeking someone to share the universe with. It's far more subtle here, but all the elements are in place over 40 years before Russell T. Davis would make it the show's core ethos. This means that the rescue, a diverting enough two-parter, involving a murder mystery on a crashed spaceship, is much more important to the history of Doctor Who than it initially seems. Number 8. Dimensions in Time Sure, there are doubts over whether 1993's charity sketch Dimensions in Time is canon, but what else was the Seventh Doctor referring to when he mentioned the Rani in Tales of the TARDIS? But aside from now being canonically the beginning of Ace's final regular adventure, Dimensions in Time represents a notable technological first for Doctor Who. That's because it was the first Doctor Who story to be shot in 3D. It's worth pointing out that this was part of a wider gimmick deployed by Children in Need in 1993, but... Doctor Who was the show that best fit the format. On the original broadcast, a little icon would pop up in the corner of the screen, instructing viewers to put on the 3D glasses they got from the front of the Radio Times, so that they could be dazzled by the nightmarish floating heads of William Hartnell and Patrick Troughton. It's obviously far more primitive than the technology used to realise the day of the Doctor's eye-popping 3D sequences, but that doesn't stop it being the first Doctor Who story to use it. So that's 3D for the 30th anniversary and the 50th anniversary. Uh, 4DX screening for the 70th anniversary, anyone? Number 7. Fear Her It's easy to miss, but the moment in Fear Her when the 10th Doctor says, I was a dad once, is the first time modern Doctor Who confirms that the Doctor was a parent. You could say that it's the first time this fact has been confirmed in the entire history of Doctor Who. Despite the Doctor being a confirmed grandfather in Doctor Who's very first episode, some fans and 80s producer John Nathan Turner were uncomfortable about the idea of the Doctor, um, procreating, shall we say. To that end, then script editor Eric Sayward wrote Birth of a Renegade for the Radio Times 20th anniversary special in 1983. The non-canon story revealed that Susan was actually a descendant of Rassilon, given shelter in the TARDIS by the Doctor during a bloody uprising on Gallifrey. Hang on, so 
Wait, grandfather was just a nickname? What's wrong with offhandedly mentioning that the doctor was once a parent and then quickly moving on before you have to consider William Hartnell a sexual being? Uh huh. You've all got it in your head now too, haven't you? But point being, it worked for Fear Her. The tenth doctor would once again state that he used to be a father in the doctor's daughter, confirming his offhand comment in Fear Her and putting any doubt to bed. Number six, the Crotons. The Crotons is seen as something of a nadir for the Patrick Troughton era of Doctor Who, but there are two reasons why it's an important serial in the overall history of the show. In November 1981, the Crotons were selected to represent the second Doctor in the five faces of Doctor Who on BBC Two. This series of repeat stories was a way to keep fans occupied while they waited for the proper debut of Peter Davison's fifth Doctor in January 1982. The reason that the Crotons was chosen was because it was the only complete four-part Patrick Troughton serial in the archives at the time. Thankfully, much more of his era has resurfaced in the years that followed. The other big reason that the Crotons is so important to the history of Doctor Who is that it was the debut serial from Robert Holmes, who would go on to bigger and better things. Holmes' tenure as script editor marks an undisputed golden age of Doctor Who between 1975 and 1977. Holmes is also responsible for much of the Gallifreyan and Time Lord mythology that still defines the show in 2024. And it's all thanks to his inauspicious start scripting the Crotons. Number 5. The Power of the Doctor The Power of the Doctor regenerated Jodie Whittaker back into David Tennant, celebrated 100 years of the BBC, and brought back almost all of the surviving classic Doctors, along with multiple companions, most notably Tegan and Ace. So it's already a pretty important Doctor Who story. However, it was also the very first Doctor Who story to air after the death of Queen Elizabeth II, marking a whole new era for the UK. She had reigned for every single bit of Doctor Who up to that point, which speaks to both her and the show's incredibly long tenures. Rumoured to be a Doctor Who fan herself, the Queen is said to have received pre-release DVD copies of episodes, leading to the wild rumour that Prince William is hoarding missing episodes. In just her first decade on the throne after her coronation in June 1953, the Queen reigned over one of the UK's most culturally important periods in recent memory. As well as Doctor Who, the 1960s saw the birth of Bond and the Beatles, cultural powerhouses that still define the United Kingdom's national identity to this day. Number 4. Underworld As you work your way through the Doctor Who Season 15 box set, it may be tempting to skip Underworld. It's long been derided as one of the low points in the Tom Baker era due to its dreary story and over-reliance on green screen. However, the fact that Underworld is the first Doctor Who story to use virtual sets is just one of two reasons that it's more important than fans give it credit for. Sure, the colour separation overlay in Underworld is a perfect example of why innovations like the volume are needed, but it stumbles so that Doctor Who in 2024 could fly. Underworld is also a fairly big Time Lord mythology episode, exploring why they established the non-intervention policy that the Doctor so regularly flouts. In the time after their war with the Great Vampires, the Time Lords involved themselves in the affairs of the wider galaxy. Opting to help the Minyans, they shared advanced technology that accidentally caused a nuclear war. Horrified at the consequences of their actions, the Time Lords vowed to merely observe the universe, never involving themselves in the affairs of other species. Until the Doctor came along, that is. Number 3. The War Machines In The War Machines, the first Doctor finally returns to 1960s London, only to find strange things going on at the post office tower. It's the blueprint for the unit era and RTD's own take on Doctor Who. But that's not the most important thing about The War Machines. As with a lot of 1960s Doctor Who, The War Machines was sent out to Commonwealth nations, including New Zealand, Australia and Nigeria. Many of these prints became the only existing copies when the BBC began junking their film cans. Over the years, many Doctor Who stories have been recovered from old broadcast stations in Commonwealth nations by people like Philip Morris. Before all of that, however, an Australian collector had acquired a print of the War Machines episode 2 at some point in the late 1960s to the early 1970s. This was years before the complete serial was discovered in Nigeria in 1984. That Australian print was returned to the BBC archives in the late 1970s, making the War Machines episode 2 the first of Doctor Who's many missing episodes to be returned from overseas. Number 2. The Runaway Bride 
On Christmas Day 2006, The Runaway Bride proved that Doctor Who could survive without Billy Piper's rose by introducing Catherine Tate as Donna Noble, an important moment in the history of the modern era. The Runaway Bride took on added significance in 2020 when it was the subject of one of Emily Cook's lockdown tweet-alongs. Rewatching her debut story had a real impact on Catherine Tate, who mentioned to Russell T Davis how marvellous it would be to do more episodes as Donna. Tate then spoke to David Tennant, who predicted voiced a similar desire to return to Doctor Who. Russell T Davis dutifully reported this news to the BBC, who were struggling to find a way to keep the show going. In fact, Chris Chibnall was so sure that the BBC would rest Doctor Who for a bit that he left the ending of The Power of the Doctor open-ended. To be clear, the Chibnall era did not kill Doctor Who. It was more that the BBC were out of options for a viable replacement showrunner. That was until a giant Welshman kicked open the doors of the BBC, offering them the way forward. If it hadn't been for a 15-year-old bit of television, then we may not have a brand new season of Doctor Who to come in 2024. Number 1. The Chase With the Beatles appearing in Doctor Who in season one, it's a good time to remind ourselves of their earliest connection with the show. In an incredible bit of irony, a clip of the Beatles performing Ticket to Ride on Top of the Pops only exists because it's preserved in a bit of 1960s Doctor Who, one of the biggest victims of the BBC's notorious junking policy. The opening scenes of 1965's The Chase see the first Doctor introduce his companions to the time-space visualizer, which allows them to view moments from history like they were a TV program. Basically, Rick and Morty's interdimensional cable before it was a thing. One of the sequences was some classical music, the Beatles performing live. The sequence was lifted from an episode of the BBC's Top of the Pops, which no longer exists in the archive, meaning that this little snippet is all that remains of the performance. However, if writer Terry Nation had his way, the clip wouldn't have been included at all. The original script for The Chase would have shown the Beatles in old man makeup performing at a 50th anniversary concert in the 21st century. Keen for the Beatles' young fans not to be put off by middle-aged versions of their idols, manager Brian Epstein turned down the offer, and the Top of the Pops clip was used instead. And there you have it. But while we're on the topic of importance, why not check out 10 Doctor Who characters more important than you realised? In the meantime, I've been Ellie for Who Culture, and in the words of Riversong herself, goodbye, sweeties.